didn't like it. I was not interested in it. I just could not read it. I... Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I am just going to check that this is actually recording and recording audio. I don't see why it wouldn't be but I haven't filmed in such a long time that I don't know how to do any of these things anymore. Anyway, I wanted to record today a DNF video because I don't recall the last time I did one of these actually, um, but I will link a sort of like recent one, I say a recent one, the last one in the cards. I have DNF'd eight books this year, two of them have been poetry collections. So I thought I would just talk about why I DNF'd them, um, because they're just the kind of books, because I DNF them, unless I was carrying on with my monthly vlogs, you just wouldn't hear me talk about them. I mean, you wouldn't hear me talk about them because I've not done a video in forever. But I will be doing an end of year video. So either that will come out at like, you know, very much towards the end of December or in January. In today's video, we're going to talk about DNS. I'm just going to start off with this because it's the only one that I actually have a physical copy of. The rest, um, I think I did have physical copies of, but they were all library copies, as is this one, um, which is why you can see the glare. This, yes, as you can see, it's a poetry collection by Carol and Duffy. This just wasn't for me, right? I was reading it. I, you know, know that she was a poet laureate, a um, very well-known name. So I was like, yeah, let me let me get on some of this poetry and see like what other people are reading. I just do believe with poetry, it's just so important to read, importantly, it's so important to read so widely. Um, and I know for me, the kind of poets that I seem to like, it's just those that I have a very emotional connection with the words that they put on their page, the themes that they're sort of writing about that are, I guess, not relevant to me, but it's very much like contemporary. And I just mean like, I guess, probably like mainly millennials, which I feel like makes me sound really cliche, but I just kind of don't care because like, they evoke such an emotion from me because I feel like they are saying the things that I feel. When I was reading some of these poems, I was just like, okay. Like, I was just going through them and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I get um, some of it is about, like, growing up in Scotland and, grow and schools and just kind of that coming of age. But it just wasn't sparking anything in me. And I was just kind of like, why am I reading this if I'm not enjoying it? And I knew I was reading it because I know she's a very well-respected poet and I want to be able to join the ranks of being able to like comment on her poetry. But if I don't like it, well, like what's the point in like suffering through it? It's not like I hated it. I was just reading it and I was just like, I don't feel inspired. I don't feel like this is for me. Um, and that is all I can give you in terms of why I stopped reading it, which is a perfectly valid explanation. Um, so that's that one. And I DNF that on the 11th of December and it is the 16th of December today. So, and I actually started reading this like when I was on holiday. I went to Mexico in November. And I actually started reading it there and I was a bit like, Ugh, but then I just thought, oh, maybe it's the sunshine vibes. I just feel like this is not for it. And then I came back and I was like still struggling to like get you through it. And I was like, mm, it's just not for me. And um, so let's take it back to the earliest book that I DNF'd earlier this year, which was in March, on March 21st, and that book was Nervous System. So I actually recall this book as being something that Mark Nash talked about, and when he was talking about it, themes of it sounded really cool. The protagonist in this book is a scientist, an astrophysicist, I believe, and um, she essentially starts becoming very unwell, so it's having a lot of series of tests run on her. They don't know like what the cause of the illness is, they just have the symptoms, and so she's just going through all these different um, tests for it. I think she's also writing like a thesis at the time, and I think one of the things that she's struggling to deal with is she maybe has like an estranged relationship with her father. I mean, I read this in March, so I, and I didn't read all of it, obviously, so my memory of it's very limited. Um, so I think as she's going through all of these things, she's also de dealing with that sort of difficult relationship with him, and I know they're like having some sort of maybe phone call exchanges and stuff like that, and it just seems like her childhood was very, I don't know, it seemed like very dark, um, didn't seem like the best. Um, and I think it's just more in lack of emotion than any anything else. Um, and for me, I was just reading the book and I was just like, I am not enjoying this, like this book feels so grim to me. And the large reason that I actually stopped reading this book, and I think actually at the time I was still doing a reading blog, so I think I did talk about this briefly, was the character felt very, the writing and the character felt very like disengaged from anything. It was someone who had just kind of like just felt, I guess, like not connected to the world, to people around her. Um, and so she felt very disengaged. And so reading it, I just felt like, well, you don't care about the things around you. I find it hard to care about this book and what I might potentially learn from it, all the emotions I might potentially go through from it. I was just like, for me, it's not really worth the investment when I just kind of feel like, that there is nothing of substance here. Like I just didn't feel any emotional pull to it. And the character was just like, 
non-committed and I just I don't like that in characters I feel the minute I read a book and I have a character that's very disengaged you know very like and I don't mean like characters that are kind of like worries me about the world and stuff like that but ones that are just kind of like this is this this is that I'm just like okay this is not for me like I like emotion in my books and this book did not have any of that another book that I DNF'd is the book of memory um so this year, I was saying to so many people, I have just been using my library like no man's business and I'm so glad I used my library for this book because this book has been in my Amazon basket for such a long time and so I'm not even sure where I got the recommendation from, where I heard about it and yeah, I don't know if this tells me how many pages I stopped on but I'm using Storygraph by the way. So it seems I got 24% of the way through that book. This book is about a woman called Memory. She is an albino woman and she is in a prison in Zimbabwe and has been convicted of murder. And the book kind of opens up with like her in prison and then we're kind of taken back into her childhood and we're trying to, I guess, ascertain one, whether she actually did kill this person, but also we're, we as a reader are trying to find out, um, we, we're hearing about her history and how like she got to this point. <laughs> the issue that I ran into with this book is I didn't really even get to the point really of where her life sort of started into who was the victim and like or the victim and who died. The initial bits are very much about her childhood and her upbringing and we're going back to like her village and like I think her parents actually ended up selling her to the guy that she ends up like hitting um, and for me, I was reading it and I was just like, why are we being introduced to so many characters from her childhood, childhood who I feel will actually play absolutely no role in what happens later in her life and as to why she's in this prison. So I was just hearing, I think for me, the point where I was just like, I don't actually want to read this, is there was a point where it was talking about some of her neighbours and I think they had like four children and they were like four girls and it was going through all the names of them and then like talking about the different things they like to do and I was just like, First of all, I can't actually remember <laughs> who any of these people are, but also why, like, I just felt there was no need to go so so deep into the backstory when a kind of nice quick summary would have sufficed, because unless these four people, plus their mum and their aunts, whatever, and the other neighbours, are uh, crucial to the rest of the story, I don't really think we need to know their names. Like, I just, it's a fiction story, it's a fictional story. So I was like, why are we stuffing this with so many things? And I think just because as I was reading on, I was like, I just don't even feel like what the reveal would be would be interesting to me. So I actually decided to DNF it. And then, <laughs> because I am just super nosy, I wanted to find out what happened, as in like, why did she kill the man? Like, I was like, please let me know what the actual reveal is. So I did skip ahead to like, towards the end and like the middle bit so I could find out. And once I kind of found out what the plot was and what had unfolded, I was like, oh my God, thank God I did not read this book to find that out because I was like, yeah, I, I'm not interested in that. It's not actually that interesting to me. It's not like the writing had enough to carry me through. The writing was perfectly fine, but it wasn't like amazing enough that I was like, I'm going to power through this. So I was like, thank goodness I did not continue. So that's why that one got DNF. It sounds bad because it sounds like, I mean, all of these things are always very like subjective, aren't they? <laughs> It very much sounds like, oh Sonia, you can't keep track of characters and that's why you DNF the book. And in a way, that's, you know, if you were to summarise it in that way, that would be accurate in some ways. Um, but I just kind of felt like none of this is relevant. This is all feels like filler. Let's get to the main story because we can build up her history and get a, an idea of her background and where she grew up and the kind of things that she experienced without such a huge deep dive because we don't need a deep dive. I know for a fact none of that was relevant to the endings of the story. So yes, we could summarize it that way, but it's not just that. But I, yeah, I think I do struggle sometimes when books have tons and tons of characters, even sometimes in my Agatha Christie novels, when there's just like loads of people in the family and I'm just like, who is this person again? And why is this relevant? But usually that ends up like kind of playing out and you're like, right, okay, cool. Some of the people really are people you don't need to focus on. So let's move to another book. And this was a book I picked up earlier this year from the library. Love my library, shout out to the library. Um, and this is Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry. This was long listed for the Booker Prize. And it's not really a prize that I now follow. One of my very first videos was on the Booker Prize books. Um, but I was like, mm, after doing the Women's Prize, I was like, I actually don't really want to like read all the books in it. Um, and obviously with the Women's Prize, I didn't, I didn't want to read the books that I wasn't interested in. So I found two books that I would be interested in and decided to read those. I was reading Old God's Time and I was just like, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to read this. This is absolutely so boring to me. I gave this book a really good shot, I feel, because the book is not very long. So sometimes if I'm not enjoying a book and it's not very long, I'm just like, oh, just, you can do it. 
but I got halfway through this and I was like, I am not prepared to suffer no more. And um, this book is about a retired police officer living in Ireland, and I believe his service as well was in Ireland. Um, and very much a lot of it is the fact that he's moved to this kind of like remote place. Um, so he barely sees a soul for like a couple of days. And then I guess there's the kind of man who kind of owns the house. And then there's like this woman and her kid that have recently moved in. And then one day these two officers like from his force, um, but the kind of newer generation knock on his door about like a sort of case many years ago. And it is to do with like priests and sexual assault of young men. I really hope I'm remembering that correctly because all of this I'm using my memory for. So um, it is to do with, of course, that history of um, sexual abuse against young boys. Um, and along the kind of similar timeline, we're also hearing him like recount his older life. So when he had a wife and like his two kids. Um, and for me, I think what was actually not enjoyable about this book was the fact that I couldn't really tell if the, our narrator was a reliable narrator. Like I couldn't really tell if actually he was just misremembering things and that he never had like a wife and kids and things like that. Because as I was reading the book, there are certain things that are clearly like in his head that he's doing because he thinks he's been called down to the police station or something like that. But then you're reading on and you find out actually has he? So has he just kind of imagined this stuff? And I couldn't tell between what was the actual reality and what he had imagined. And I imagine that is the case of the book, the point of the book, and if you keep on reading, all will be revealed. But it was such a slow paced book as well. Um, and I guess for me, and I guess the character he was, whilst I felt some sympathy towards the character, I didn't feel enough sympathy to continue reading the book because I didn't feel any sort of emotional connection to it. I just felt like really frustrated with it. Um, and I think I just like that sense of knowing where I am. I'm not, this isn't magical realism, but I'm not someone who enjoys magical realism for those exact reasons. I don't enjoy reading the book and halfway through, like, I don't know, the walls start floating. Okay, that kind of sounds like they're on acid or something. But I don't enjoy that kind of like split between like reality and what people are actually imagining. I, I like things to be very much grounded in what I know, which is another reason why I don't really enjoy fantasy because I don't have the imagination to be thinking of like what uh, what the things look like and how the worlds work. I, I have to mirror it in what I already know. So that's why I ended up DNF in that book. I thought it was okay written, like, and obviously the author is like a Sunday best time seller, so, you know, people are probably going to be like, you, you clearly don't know lit literature. But it just wasn't for me. Um, and there was another book on the Booker Prize that I actually ended up reading, The House of Doors, which was phenomenal. I absolutely loved it. It didn't get shortlisted, actually, but that was the other one that I picked up and absolutely enjoyed. So the final book I'm going to speak about is actually one that I do have. If the camera angle has changed slightly, it's because the camera was propped up against this book and I was like, wait a minute, that is one of the books that I could talk about. So this is Doris Lessing, The Golden Notebook, and I know, I know, I know so many people love this book, and I told people I was reading it, so many people were like, that's my favourite book, I love that book, or I love that book when I was growing up, or I know a friend who was reading that said so they really loved it, blah 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 blah. It's not for me. So I actually started reading this in June and didn't DNF it until October. So that shows you that I gave it a really, really good chance. I, I think I very much didn't enjoy this book from the beginning. It opens up with these two characters. I believe it will be Anna and her friend. I don't know what her friend's name is. And I guess they're in this scenario where they're talking about their husbands or they're kind of like, I guess, divorced husbands and their life and their children and all of these things. Straight off the bat, that was like very much not interesting for me. It, the setting, the tone, everything was just like not for me. They're just talking about like as well, one of them has a son who I think basically doesn't do anything, you know? I think he's either like 16 or 20. I believe he's like 20. So the way they were talking about him, I felt he was like really young. And then you kind of figure out what age he is and you're just like, okay. Um, so that was boring, but I was like, okay. I think it, it was around that time that I stopped because I didn't find it very interesting. One of the kind of partners comes around and they talk about the son and what he's like and the, you, there's kind of like tensions in the room and all of that stuff. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Um, and then actually probably should summarize on the back what this book is supposed to be about because obviously I didn't read it all. So I don't know what, what ends up happening. Although I kind of, the premise of this book sounds very exciting because it's called The Golden Notebook and it is about Anna who has these like four different notebooks and she uses them for different things. So I believe it says here, 
Um, says the Golden Notebook is the story of Anna Wolfe, a divorced single mother and novelist labouring against writer's block in 1950s London. Fearful of going mad, she recalls her experiences in four coloured notebooks. The black notebook recalls her writing life, the red her political views, the yellow notebook her emotional life, and the blue everyday events. But it is the fifth notebook, the Golden Notebook, that brings the strands of her life together and holds the key to her recovery. I only got to the black notebook where she's talking about the story that she's been through and it was so boring. Like that notebook coupled with the intro chapter that I'd read about like just her and her friend and like setting the scene of their lives. I was just like, this can probably get worse, you know? And it, now that I'm reading about the different notebooks, I'm like the yellow notebook is probably quite interesting and the blue notebook, I don't really have an interest in her political life and her political views. And so for me, it's very hard, to, not hard to summarise, like, why I DNF the book. I think it's, I'm conscious of saying why I didn't like it, because I didn't read the whole thing, but that's the case for everything I've said here. But I feel like the other ones, I might have gotten a little bit further than, um, than I did in the other ones, and I did in this. I got to 22% of the way through in this. And obviously, this is a fucking huge, chunky book. It's, like, nearly 600 pages long. And I love reading long books but they have to be captivating. And for me, the story that we're reading in the black notebook about her writing life and the sort of plot and story that she had there, I was not interested. It was like, it was about like four men. It was very uninteresting. Um, I'm even struggling to remember what they were talking about. I think it was building its way to this kind of crucial point in their life that kind of um, sends everything like into disarray. But everything she was talking about with, when she was building like each character, I was like, I don't like them, they sound boring, they sound terrible, I cannot get through this book. And I just found it really, really hard to get through this book. And I feel like I really tried with this one. Like I said, I started it in June and finished it in October. When I picked it up again in October, I actually went back many, many pages um, to give to refresh my memory of what had happened and just to give it another go. Because sometimes I feel like if you read a book when you're like, I don't know, it depends on the mood you're in, to be honest. So I was like, ah, maybe like I just didn't get it because I wasn't in the right mood or what, right mind frame. No, the book was just as bad. Um, and I think for me, I have a real trouble. I have real trouble in letting go of a book because I'm just like, has to be like you should, if you're going to start something, you should carry it, see it through, and all this sort of stuff. But I know in the past couple of years, I've just literally been like, life is too long to be reading terrible books when there are other books that I can pick up and like absolutely get into and absolutely enjoy. Um, and for me, I just felt like this is not for me. And it's not that the author is not for me. I have read Mara and Dan by Doris Lessing and I absolutely loved it. And again, that is the kind of book that I would describe as not for me. It's a dystopian kind of book. I I am not a dystopian reader, but that book was freaking fantastic. However, The Golden Notebook is just not for me. I don't see myself <laughs> picking this up again and giving it another go, despite the fact that I know so many people really, really enjoyed it. I just read it and was just like, this is too boring for me. I cannot continue. So that is it, that is it for this DNF video. Um, I don't know how to sign out the video, I guess. Let me know if you have read any of these books and you persevered and you really enjoyed them. I feel like The Golden Notebook is one that people really, really enjoyed. I guess because of when this video will be going up and how lax I am with filming videos, I think this will definitely be the last video I film and upload before the holidays. So definitely have a wonderful, restful, pleasant time over the holidays. I am very, very grateful that I have quite a lot of time off uh, and I'm just looking forward to using that time to just like rest and recharge and just prep myself for the year ahead because I'm very excited for 2024 and what it's going to bring me. I Part of me wishes I had continued to vlog more as we got into the second half of the year, but once I fell out of it, I just completely fell out of it. But I do I do want to say that I've had a very, very beautiful year, a year that has been full of like a lot of teachings, but a year that has just been, I don't know, I wanna say like one of the best years of my life, honestly. Um, I just feel like I've come into my own so much and I'm just so excited for like what 2024 is going to bring me. I'm obviously looking forward to wrapping up the year, but it's it's been a lovely year. So yeah, um, I hope the same for you. If it hasn't been the case, I hope 2024 will be that year. And yeah, I'll see you either at the end of December with my um, stats video for 2024 or the beginning of 2024 for 2023 or at the beginning of 2024 for the same stats video. Bye!